All right, guys, uh, you saw me pull all the eggs. Now we're going to put the eggs actually in their incubation uh, containers. Um, I just use actually these uh, Chinese takeout containers um, with a uh, clear lid on the top of them. Um, hopefully you guys can see these. Um, they're probably about, uh, I would say two to three inches deep. Um, they have the clear lid um, that snaps on um, and then it's easy to uh, write on it with a dry erase marker um, so that uh, looking straight down you can actually see um, what uh, what the egg actually is and stuff like that and hopefully this uh, the cameras uh, pointed down to where it needs to be all right so we got all of our eggs lined up here um, hopefully you guys can see that as well um, now we're gonna put them away uh, like I was saying before um, like the rotating of the egg or anything like that um, you guys hear that? That's the freaking male uh, universe going nuts on that Mac uh, Raptor that I just put him in with. Um, like, like, uh, off topic. Okay. <laughs> like I said before, um, the eggs, it, uh, it really doesn't matter um, if they get flipped over or anything like that. You're not going to hurt them or anything. Um, I think actually Ron Tremper even talks in his book where he's dropped eggs and they've rolled around on the floor and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and from my experience, um, I've never lost an embryo because it got like turned over or anything like that. Um, I believe that the reasoning for that is that they actually are communal layers. Um, I've noticed that with my cave geckos as well. Um, what they'll do is multiple females will actually lay eggs in the same spot. And because of this, um, there is that uh, risk factor for the eggs to be turned over. Um, so I believe that they've kind of evolved in how the egg um, and its development goes that they actually can be you know moved and flipped over and stuff like that without any harm being done to the actual babies um, it's not like uh, like a female alligator where she lays all of her eggs at once and then she watches her nest I think that the the nests if you will um, for these animals uh, are actually kind of communal in the aspect that uh, multiple eggs will be laid in the same spot um, I, I did notice that with my cave geckos in a naturalistic setup is that, uh, they, I had, uh, four females in there and they actually all laid their eggs within a spot about this big. And I mean, there was multiple clutches, um, in there and it, uh, it kind of made me wonder if leopard geckos were the same way. Um, and that's, I believe the reasoning why the eggs can be flipped over and stuff like that. Um, how I came about it, uh, it was just, uh, you know, laziness at the end of one season where, you know, eggs uh, were coming at a pretty fast clip and I started laying them out like this and they would roll around. I mean, you see them jiggling and stuff like that. And I've always uh, been able to hatch them out. Uh, and I mean, some of these eggs, like you saw me pulling, um, some of these eggs are actually probably 14 days old at least. Um, because there's multiple clutches in the same thing and it usually takes about 14 days for a female to recover and then you know lay a, another batch of eggs um so i mean they're they're gonna hatch just fine um that's why i don't mark them or anything like that uh if anything i would think that the marker might be a little bit toxic to them like writing it on the uh on the eggshell if you use like a permanent marker or something like that um, but anyway, that's my little spiel on the eggs um, and why uh, I just kind of leave them lay out like this uh, whenever, I, whenever I'm going through and collecting. Usually what I'll do is I'll do about two racks, uh, then I'll put the eggs away, do another two racks, put the eggs away. Um, because usually how I have uh, the gecko set up in the gecko room here, uh, it, um, they're in groups of the same type of thing the whole way down through the rack. Uh, so that way, whenever I'm pulling eggs for incubation, uh, I can put the eggs together. Um, what I'm going to do with these eggs, actually, is uh, there's going to be uh, two different uh, uh, incubation boxes that I'm going to get ready. Um, one of them is going to be with my bells, which uh, these eggs right here are bell stuff, uh, the Afghan eggs, and um, that's where it starts with the sun glow. So right here... From here on, those are all going to be in the same. Uh, those are all going to be in the same incub or the same uh, incubation box. Uh, these two are those duds that uh, I pulled, um, and I'm just going to put those in a small container to see if they're viable or not. Um, I, I put them in a small container by themselves 
so that they're easy just to throw away. And um, if they do start like rotting or anything like that, um, I don't uh, mess up any other eggs that might be in with them. All right, so what we're gonna do is simply put uh, the container on our scale. We're gonna zero it. Um, a lot of people do like the uh, touch method to see how, um, you know, how much water is in it and stuff like that. I don't, I just use the measurement method, um, which what I do is this is my perlite. I actually get two bags at a time whenever I get it. And um, I actually just get the regular stuff they sell at Walmart and stuff like that. But what I actually do is I actually rinse it um, so that, because uh, the stuff that I get, it, it can have that miracle Grow stuff in. So what I do is I actually rinse it just to be on the safe side so that there's no like toxins or anything like that getting into uh, my leopard gecko eggs. Um, so what I do is I actually take a huge uh, Rubbermaid container, put the two bags in. Um, I actually th throw a bunch of hot water in there and I will actually stir it around, make sure that the, uh, any toxins or anything like that uh, get, get off the perlite itself. And then I will um, uh, rinse it again. I take a strainer to it. Um, and the other good part is it gets out all that small, like uh, fine dusty stuff. I mean, you'll still get a little bit of dust, but it's not uh, nearly what you would get if, um, if you just were using it normally. Uh, and it's just uh, something that I've kind of done out of, uh, you know, just just to do it. Um, I don't know if it has any beneficial effects or anything like that to the eggs, um, but I rinse it. The big thing, though, is you have to make sure you dry it back out. So what I actually do, um, that's why I have so much of it ready right now, is those two bags, once I, uh, you know, wet them and get them, uh, uh, you know, cleaned off, if you will, um, I actually put them in containers like this uh, with only maybe, you know, about that much in it. And I'll actually put it in one of the racks um, so that it'll heat up and, and, and uh, the water will evaporate out of them. Uh, I did this one uh, a few weeks ago. So this is actually as dry as it comes. And what I do is I actually just set it on top of one of my racks so that it can continuously stay dried out. Um, but all we do is just take a scoop and I would say that's probably about 50 grams right there. Oh, uh, you know what? I took so long discussing that that uh, my scale turned off. <coughs> so good times. All right, let's see how accurate I am. That's probably about 50 grams right there. Ha, huh, 52. That's whenever you can tell you've been doing this a long time, is whenever you can pretty much tell almost to the gram just by kind of looking at it. All right, next thing that we do is add the water. Um, what I'll do with these eggs is um, I'll put uh, 50, uh, 50 grams of perlite in here. And then I usually put uh, like 110 to 120, up to 110 or 120 of uh, water depending on how long I've let the, the eggs lay out and stuff like that. So what I just did was put 50 grams of uh, perlite and then uh, it would be 70 grams of water in this container and uh, then what I do next is just put the lid on it and just shake it up and then just kind of uh, go like that to make it flat. Um, and I'm gonna do the other ones real quick while I'm doing this. Um, so then you can just see me put all the eggs away at once and then I can start labeling and stuff like that. Scale zeroed. Let's see if I can hit it 50 or eight on the dot. That's 51. Oh, way off. 57 this time. Must have been some bigger chunks in it. Um, which that's fine. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it. So uh, it'll probably be like 130 that I'll add to it. Just because there's 7 extra grams of uh, perlite. Uh, 
All right, there, 130, 130, 131, that's perfectly fine. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Because I am using the, uh, the scale method, so it's not like uh, just going by feel or anything like that. The best thing to do is just get a scale. Because, um, I mean, if you're just starting out doing this, you don't know what it's supposed to feel like. So <laughs> the best thing to do is just to measure it all out. All right. Now I got those two, I'm just going to do the little uh, container for those two dud eggs. And usually for the little container I'll put about 30 in here. <coughs> Actually, you know what? They're duds. So we're just going to put 25 in there. And then I'm just going to put, uh, just go to 55 with the water. Yeah, 57. Doesn't have to be an exact science. Usually leopard gecko eggs are pretty bulletproof. I mean, they come from a desert environment, so... Uh, they've evolved over the years to be pretty freaking hardy. Alright, like I said, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the uh, bell eggs and the Afghanicus eggs into one container. Um, as you remember, these uh, first two came from one bell female, these four came from another bell female, these four came from another bell female, and then these came from the Afghanicus, um, which uh, that was all in the video that I just did. And what I'm going to do, just so that stuff is beside itself, we're going to put these two eggs here. And as you can see, I just do that with my fingers, uh, and it makes the little divots um, to put the eggs. All right, so what we got are, um, looking back up onto the uh, rack here, we got a bold bell female crossed to a bold bell um, het radar male and two eggs. And then going down, we've got uh, a bell 100% a head eclipse crossed to a white and yellow het for radar. Um, that was the other four eggs. And then the next four eggs were um, from, a, from the bold bell another bold bell female, cross to bold bell hat for radar. Um, and then we've got the two Afghanicus eggs down here. All right, so now that I went through what eggs we're putting away here, I don't know if you guys noticed as well. You guys are probably wondering how do I know which eggs are what whenever I just lay them out all on the table like that. And it's actually um, how I position them on the table, which uh, if you were just watching the video, you'd probably be like, what the heck is he doing? How does he know which eggs are which and blah, blah, blah. Um, um, I don't know if you noticed whenever I had them laying there, some were turned uh, you know, up and down and some were turned sideways. What I do is basically um, for every group that I pull, they're um, sitting a different way. That's the one egg, so it's sitting this way. This one was a four egg, so they're sitting that way. Two eggs sitting that way, 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 two eggs sitting that way. Um, that's how I know which ones they are. And since I do it in order from, it's, it's kind of funny, I don't do it from like uh, left to right like I'd be reading, I do it from right to left. Um, I'll, I know from marking my tubs which eggs are which, um, which is... You guys probably were like, how the heck does he know which eggs are which by just throwing them out there, but that's uh, that's the way it is. All right, now we're going to come over here, and uh, I'm going to look at my tubs while I'm writing on these, and it's uh, bold bell cross to bold bell. And then we're just going to put a little lowercase r because it's het for radar. That's those ones. These two are Afghan. I just put a little P on there because they're pure Afghan. Um, these next four right here are actually Bell, um, Head Eclipse, Cross to White and Yellow. 
hit radar. Okay. And then the next four are the bold bells again, uh, using the same mail. Bold bell, cross bold bell. And then just a little lowercase r because they're het for radar. Actually, I can just write it on this one. <coughs> and then I usually just throw the date on here somewhere, which uh, it's 2-8. Uh, and then these guys are done. These guys are ready for the incubator. And as you can see, like uh, looking straight down on them, you can see which eggs are which. I put the line above the egg so I can tell which eggs are which. And uh, this one's done. This one's actually going to go into the male incubator because I want these Afghanicus uh, to be boys. So that'll go into the male incubator. Um, let's put away our duds since they're next in line here. And we'll kind of put them a little bit further apart from each other, just um, so if one actually is good and one isn't, uh, they don't uh, hurt each other either. <coughs> and like we said, uh, this one's a pure fascio, actually. Actually, I didn't even uh, pull the pure macularis once. I thought I did all the uh, tubs. Um, and then we've got, uh, this one's Mac, Raptor, Cross, U for Universe. Um, so those ones are done. Actually, just to be uh, nosy here, let's see if she laid any eggs. I forgot to clean this tub. It was too busy uh, going through. Showing you that I missed one. Well, that's why I didn't pull eggs from that one because there is no eggs from that one. Um, that's the. Those are two uh, pure uh, macularis macularis. Uh, those are the Steve Sykes line. I made a mistake on the video. Um, the ones that I was pulling eggs from were actually fasciolatus, fasciolatus. All right. All right, now, what we have is the basically the rest of the eggs here. Um, and then we've got four, 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 two. Okay. So what we're going to do, just to make this a little simpler, I'm going to put this egg here. And then I'm actually going to grab these two eggs, which were the last two eggs that I pulled. Those are the uh, lab stripe. And then we're going to get the next group because this was a group of four. So that they're all straight across. I like doing it that way because um, that way it's easier to write straight across like that. Um, and then we've got these two, these two. And then we've got two more, which is these two and these two. So as you can see, as I was putting them in this container, they were are put in in order of um, how they were pulled, which uh, that makes it a lot easier whenever I'm going through to um, <clears throat> whenever I'm labeling these guys. All right, so the first one, we've got... Uh, Tug, Sun, Cross, White and Yellow, Het, Marble. Alright, these ones were our lab stripe, because I put them out of order. Lav, Cross, Snow Lav. And that's all I really need to put, because, uh, um, you know, that's uh, what they are. All right, then actually, we got four, four, and two. All right, so these four right here are sun crossed, sun tug, which that's just the uh, uh, tug sun glow. These ones are Sun, 
to sun. And then we go further down, we've got some um, creamsicle. Cream cross E for the electric mail. And then we've got uh, spot cross to eclipse. So it's spot cross eclipse for those two. Alrighty. <clears throat> so basically whenever all these uh, guys hatch out, as you can see I've already um, separated the bell stuff from the tremper stuff. Um, so anything in this container that hatches out albino it's going to be bell. Anything that hatches out uh, of this container that's albino is going to be tremper. Um, these ones will not hatch out albino because it's lab stripe crossed to across the snow lab stripe this one we're gonna get uh, we have a half a chance of getting an albino out of that one these are gonna all be albinos these are gonna all be albinos um, these ones down here have a possible shot of get being albino um, but I'll still be able to tell these babies from anybody else um, the only ones that if they hatched out at the same time that I wouldn't know um, which female they came from or anything like that or the sun glows um, the two sun glow crosses which they're sun glow to sun glow, so it's it's really not that big of a deal because they're just going to be sun glows anyway. I just won't know exactly what female they were from if there's two babies and you know this one and this one hatched. Um, but I probably actually could tell because this sun glow pairing right here is a lot brighter and a lot nicer than this sun glow pairing, so I would be able to tell the difference between the two. Um, same thing with these uh, bold uh, bold bells um, both here and here. Um, they're basically uh, genetically the same, so it's not going to be that big of a deal if, like, say, this one hatches and this one hatches and they get mixed up and you can't tell which ones they are. Um, these uh, bell head eclipse uh, crossed a white and yellow head radar. I'll be able to tell which one these ones are because they're going to be banded, if anything. Um, these ones right here and these ones right here, they should be striped, so I'll know the difference between the two. Um, and then the, uh, um, the dud eggs, if they were fertile and actually hatch out, uh, easily to tell a difference between a pure fascio and a mac animal. Um, so that uh, it makes it a lot easier whenever they're in containers like this to actually tell what they are. And like I said, um, I go through and, and put them in containers that make sense so that uh, I'm not hatching out two things out of the same container that could look similar, but they're genetically very, very different. Uh, it's just, you know, it, you just got to kind of plan ahead. Um, plus most of this stuff, it's, it's not all going to hatch out in the same day. Um, the only way that, it, like, um, I wouldn't know exactly which even eggshell it came from is if I was, like, away or something like that, which I don't plan on going away for any time soon, so these babies all see whenever they hatch and stuff like that. Alright, so that's the, uh, the incubation, uh, containers and how I set them up. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll talk about the incubators in the next video.